Melinda Estabrooks has brought warm expressions of appreciation for your response to the beleaguered Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan. She's here with her father to tell a very personal story. Paul Estabrooks is used to engaging in difficult missions. He's worked with Open Doors International since 1979, serving persecuted Christians in 50 countries. I wonder if you remember three years ago, his visit with us talking about Night of a Million Miracles, the inside story of Project Pearl. Time Magazine called it, quote, a bold expedition executed with military precision. It's a book you're going to want to read if you haven't. Paul, what was the mission on June 18th, 1981? It was to fulfill a request from Chinese Christians that we had met inside China asking us for one million Bibles. And they wanted them all at one time, all at one place. The challenge was a million Bibles weighed 232 tons. Wow. A little tough to put in your suitcase, which is what we've been doing up until that point. And so we had, uh, God provided a tugboat and a huge barge and 232 tons of Chinese Bibles, waterproof wrapped into a project which we delivered in one night on a beach in Southern China to thousands of Christians waiting on the beach for us there. The most exciting part though is what happened to those million Bibles. I mean, they helped fuel a revival across China which we weren't even aware was beginning. I love that you called this Night of a Million Miracles, a love offensive. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I just want to borrow your term <laughs> for the journey with this uh, precious girl here. How did Melinda come into your life and why? Well, it's a very long story, but to try and make it as succinct as I possibly can, my wife and I left London, Ontario on New Year's Day, 1971, to go as missionaries to the Philippines. We were with then Far East Broadcasting Company, mm. uh, radio ministry radio. throughout Asia. And uh, I had worked at uh, CFPL Television in London in those days. And uh, we went with a, a, a baby boy, two and a half years old, and a baby girl, one year old. And uh, while we were in the Philippines, we visited orphanages and we were surprised that most of them were filled with little girls because people weren't adopting girls as much as boys. And uh, we felt that God wanted us to expand our family, and so we applied to adopt one of these uh, children. And uh, we asked for a newborn girl, whatever the next newborn that came along, uh, we asked for her, and that happened to be Melinda. Right, but Dad, you didn't say you asked for the most you know, precious, <laughs> yes. beautiful, well, intelligent uh, baby girl. <laughs> I don't elaborate the story quite as much okay. as she. So. Why are we not surprised? Yeah. <laughs> now we have to, I, I know a little inside story about you because we have a mutual friend in Peterborough and I'm not going to mention her name, but uh -huh. uh, you visited her regularly when mm -hmm. you were in the area and I have it on good authority that this wasn't Melinda, this was Peachy Pie. Oh, That's it. Did you, you just expose to I, Canada my nickname, Wayla? Oh, what you were all, called at all home. All of her childhood, she was known as Peachy Pie, <laughs> yes. Now, Peachy oh. Pie would grow up in a wonderful, loving home, but at some point, Melinda, it became important for you to find your birth mother. Mm. You know, Moira, I, I always make sure that this is clear that, you know, as an adopted child, many adopted kids, for me, I, I really believe and feel it was a gift from God to be adopted. And so my parents, Paul and Diane, are my parents. But there was something about, you know, being Filipino, it, I was in a, a white Caucasian home, that there was obviously a physical difference, a, a cultural difference. And so as I was getting older, there was that sense that I just wanted to thank my birth mother. I, I, I wanted and I felt I needed to go back to my homeland of the Philippines and just be with my people and meet her. And hopefully, I didn't know if she was alive or not, but there was something in me that just wanted to say thank you for going with, through with the pregnancy, being courageous as a young girl, and giving me the opportunity uh, to be adopted and have this life. Now, Paul, research yes. was your thing with yes. the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're good at digging up information and pulling projects together. Was this mm -hmm. was a tough one? Uh, no. Uh, it, well, it was tough in the sense that it was difficult to find her birth mother. We had a little bit of information, uh, but our co-workers from Open Doors in the Philippines did a lot of work traveling up and down the islands 
of this country to try and track where she was. Uh, we knew her father's name and where he lived. Then they found out he had passed away. Then they, they were sent to relatives way up in the north and they said, we don't know who you are, we don't want to say anything. And so they then tracked them to uh, 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 an aunt of Melinda's in Manila, right where they started. And then she informed them that her mother had married after having had Melinda several years later and was living on a rice farm down in the Visayas, the central part of the Philippines. And we just happened to have a pastor friend just minutes away from this farm who had been a Bible courier to China in the days when we took Bibles in by suitcase. This, this rural pastor had gone three times to Hong Kong to take Bibles. So they phoned him and he said, oh, I'll be very happy to help. He took a cell phone, went to the farm, met Melinda's birth mother. Now this was very delicate because she was born before the marriage and the husband may not even know about this child. And so he put her sister on the cell phone talking to her mother. And she shared with her, we know you had a baby earlier than your marriage and uh, that baby lives in Canada and wants to meet you. Are you interested? And she said, oh yes, I want to come. I will come and, and I will bring, tell my husband and we will come together and meet her in Manila. You know, and Moira, just to say this, I think the key thing here is that, you know, what I appreciate is my parents weren't afraid to find her. When I asked, there was, there was no threat. And so that's the beauty of them saying, no, we want you to find her. I yeah. also want to say too that so many Canadians and friends and churches were praying as this process was yeah. going on. And it took a lot of prayer to find, because I didn't know if she was alive or even wanted to see me. And so when yeah. I got the call, it was pretty But we also moment. knew how secure this young lady was <laughs> because when she was a kid and would have sibling rivalry with her older brother and sister, <laughs> she would say to them, Mommy and Daddy had to take you, but they chose me. <laughs> they had to have you. They had to have you, but they chose me. <laughs> okay, give us the date. I've got my tissue. Okay, me too. Give us the date, and we're going to go there to this poignant moment. Well, it was 10 years ago this week that um, we uh, found her birth mother and made an appointment for her to come and meet Melinda at the office of Open Doors in the Philippines. They brought her and her family to early had a breakfast in the kitchen and we came into the conference room and then they bring the okay. mother in to Okay, meet we're ready. Let's go to that moment. Uh, ah, this is Dory. <laughs> Hey, hi, Dory. <laughs> yeah, that's Clarissa. Hey, she's she's shorter than you are, Mel. I'm wearing heels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're wearing heels. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Hi, Dory. I'm Pablo. Hi. That's the history book that Diane That's there. Diane's and, and history book. I have to say just quickly that that was the moment for me when Dory, you know, reached up to my dad and said, thank you, Mr. S. Brooks, for answering the prayer of a mother who has prayed for her daughter since she gave her up all those years. And then my dad thanking Dory for going through with, with the pregnancy and giving him a daughter. Mm -hmm. And then I had the opportunity to say thank you to her as well. And what a, what a moment. I will never forget. It was probably the most important uh, life-changing moments in my life. And meeting the, family. You got yes, a lot of relatives. Yes, uh, yeah. I do have a lot of yes. family. And I we think had we've a got dinner some video. Night at the a dinner. Yeah. Yes, and I think we have some pictures of it. Uh, it was at a classic uh, Filipino restaurant called Kenny Rogers <laughs> Roaster. <laughs> 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 the only place yeah. we could get that long table yeah. there to have all of the the aunts and uncles and cousins and cousins' kids. Right. So I have six. I have six um, brothers and sisters and a yeah. huge family. That's this little guy on the left. Don Don, um, Don Don on the left, and so he was five when I, I met him, and that's another niece. So uh, celebrated and sang at the restaurant, and it was what a reunion of yeah. family that day. No Incredible. wonder your heart went out, uh, not just to the country, but to your family, wondering how they fared through this devastating typhoon. Yeah. Paul, the toughest yeah. part was we couldn't get it, make any contact. Uh, they're very simple rice farmers. They earn like $600 a year they live on. They have no telephone, no computer, 
no way of contacting other than mail, and she do, we're not even sure she can write because she also speaks a different dialect than Tagalog, the Philippine national language. We were not able to make any contact with the pastor uh, because the telephones were down, the electricity was off from the typhoon, and um, I was on my way to the Philippines anyway to do a standing strong uh, seminar there, uh, four open doors, and so I was able to go early and then make a trip down to find Dory and see how she was doing. That's incredible. I know you say in, in your commentary that it was a day that felt like a week. It was yes. quite an adventure. Mm -hmm. Let's go to yes. the Philippines, the way well, it looked we two went weeks down, ago. There's Dory weeks ago. walking Just across the water ago. and she and, came uh, out she, to meet us. Yeah, she walk. came out to meet us, and, and we're walking and to her. And you're almost in bare feet, Dad. Yeah, well, those so are flip flops. Flip -flops. So going through, we had to take her to the house. This is, this is her house. It looks better from the front, this mm -hmm. picture, than it than it is. So you can see how the thatched roof is almost gone, even from the front. But the back end is really, really destroyed. This is the the back of the house. The it just tore this. But it was 300 house kilometers apart. an hour winds that came in and yeah. took off the roof. Yeah. Uh, she's now living with her her daughter in, a, in another home that has no roof. I mean, it, the situation Melinda is just... Melinda will be really home. happy to, to know that you are okay. Okay. She, she, was, she, was very, <laughs> she was very concerned when we heard the news about the typhoon. She was very, very worried about you. Okay. And that night, again, we had a, <laughs> we had a dinner that night with uh, her, ex, her family who were close by at the time. And, it was a great time. I gave that Canada hat that I was wearing to her youngest brother. Don I Don saw Don this Arias picture. <laughs> Don Don yes. looks so really? much like so you, Melinda. I'm trying to see that. In, oh, I see your. But face. you know, my right when my dad was doing this, I mean, it, the the it was a, an incredible moment because we didn't know if she was going to be alive. I actually, yeah. honestly, I thought she had had passed away. Did you know before situation. she walked across that wall no. that you would yeah. see her? No. no. So we had what no idea. Moment. We had no yeah. idea. So yes. again, we had people and praying for them and uh, so thankful for that. What we found out that she is a widow. Her husband passed away two, two years, years ago. ago. So yeah. she is now a widow. And, and she will need a new home. Yes, she will. And mm -hmm. so we, we, uh, we realized that uh, she was able to stay in a, uh, a, a cement block house that was a neighbor's home. And all the neighbors came in there. And that's how they survived the typhoon. And we realized that she needs one. And so friends have already been sending resources, financial resources to us so we can build Dory a, a little cement block home that will not be blown away on the next wind. That and, and, and you know what, the one thing I am excited about is that they um, are now going to church. Yeah. We, when we first met them 10 years ago, they wanted to hear my testimony of what God had, had done in my life. And so they aren't Christians. But now I've heard because of Pastor Vic and our connection with them, I think they're thinking there's something bigger if these yeah. people are coming to find us and they are yeah. now attending church as a family. And so that is great news that we're yeah. very, very happy and to hear. The pastor who was with us just two weeks ago also has invited them to his home and his church for Christmas. And uh, yeah. we're hoping that that will... Um, will uh, produce some spiritual fruit as well. More wonderful chapters to come. Mm. The Philippines is pretty marginalized now in terms of yeah. the newscasts, but the need is still so great. Yes, it is. We need to continue our prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you better keep us up to date, I you will. too, because we love these stories. And remember that Night of a Million Miracles and Daily Inspiration from the Lion's Den, two treasures from Paul Estabrooks are at our e-store. We'll be hearing more from Melinda because she is our Crossroads Live Events girl. Mm -hmm. And we've got some very exciting visitors in January. Yes, uh, January 13th, we have Stacy Eldridge coming author of Captivating Love and War in her new book, Becoming Myself. So we're having a breakfast with Stacy, and then we're gonna see her live on Huntley. And then uh, January 14th, Philip Yancey's here with us. Woo. And March 3rd, Sheila Walsh. So oh. you can go online and sign up for our events. We're so excited for 2014. What a great, great time with both of you. Thanks, Have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you, you too. You too.